All right, so I have part B. So I'm going to start with active range of motion with extension. So if you can put your head back to your back. Perfect. All right, so now I'm going to have it laying on the mandible and his chin. So I got 10 centimeters, so then you'd want to measure this to see if it gets any worse throughout your period of time. Um, next we have is active range of motion for rotation. So if you can flip to the side, flip to the other side, perfect. So I'm going to put this on the mandible right here and the lateral part of the acromion, and he's going to turn and look towards me. about eight centimeters. So next we have passive range of motion. So he's going to lay on the table. So his head's going to be off the table and I'm going to support his head by placing my hands on the opposite foot. Can you show it to me? And then I'm going to flex his head for him. So this is going to be a firm end field from his uh, chest, his chin to his chest. Next we have lateral flexion. So I'm just going to kind of bend to the side and to the other side. So if you guys will not do it too fast, they don't hurt. That's going to be a firm or a soft end field because of the soft tissues. Next we have manual muscle testing. So these are going to be on the belly. You're going to do cervical extension. So his head's going to be in a neutral position off the table. And I'm going to have my hands on his thoracic spine. And he's going to push up against my hand. Perfect. For this, this is testing the trapezius and the levator scapula. And then for rotation, he's going to sit in the chair again. I'm going to put my hand on his shoulder, his head on the temporal bone, and then he's going to rotate toward me. Perfect. And that is uh, testing his sternocleidomastoid, rotators, and his trapezius. Next is the spring test. He's going to be on the table, on his belly. For this, we are checking uh, for his spring in his vertebrae. So you need to press in between them. This is testing if he has hyper or hypomobility in his vertebral. And if there's any pain or no spring in it, that means that he has hypermobility in his posture spring. Next, we're going to do shoulder abduction. So he's going to be sitting again. So for this one, I'm just going to tell him to extend his arm and go and put it on the top of his head. Like so um, if he has any pain doing this or if his symptoms decrease when he gets to the top of his head, that is a positive test, which could indicate a herniated disc or nerve root compression. Next, we have the Sperling test. So I'm going to stand behind him and he's going to extend and laterally flex his head and I'm going to apply force to the top of his head and if he has any pain rating down his arms or through his neck that is a positive sign and or a positive test which indicates in his nerve root impingement. Next we have a traction test so I'm going to push down on his shoulder and I'm going to passively lateral flex his head the opposite way that I'm holding his shoulder. If he has pain radiating through his upper arm um, on the side that's being stretched, that um, indicates a neural or an injury to the brachial plexus. And if it's on the compression side, then it is um, compression injury to the plexus, brachial plexus. So next we have the tension medial one. So 
you can sit or lay down on the table. Keep your arm off the table, please. So for this one, he's going to passively let me do everything. I'm going to ask him if he has any pain with any of the steps that we did this time. So I'm going to press on his shoulder. He's going to abduct his hand to grease, and you're just going to externally rotate and extend. His elbow is going to be passively extended already. He's going to supinate, and then he's going to, I'm going to extend his finger. Again, for all this, I'm going to ask if he has any pain. If by the end of this there's no symptoms or very minimal pain, I'm going to ask him to moderately flex his head to the opposite side of his arm. Okay. Um, any, again, a positive test would be any symptoms occurring during this, which indicates an abnormal tension to the median nerve. Next, we have the tension ulnar nerve. So again, same thing. Going to Depress the shoulder, externally rotate, and abduct, and extend. His elbow is also going to be passively extended as well. But this time we're going to pronate at the elbow. I'm going to extend, or flex, and then extend the finger. Again, I'm going to ask him every, through every step if he has any pain. And by the end of this, then he's going to laterally flex his head the opposite way. Again, if this was positive, he would have pain, and this is an indication of tension to the ulnar nerve. So next we have the brachioradialis reflex test. So if you can sit on the table, you have your hands over your lap. I'm going to find it. He's going to lift up his hand, and it's going to stick out. I'm going to put my thumb on it, and I'm going to press. And I'm going to tap. I'm feeling for any contraction of that nerve, which I did. Um, if I feel it bilaterally, then it's upper root or upper motor lesion. And if it's unilateral, it's lower motor neuron lesion. Um, also, you can have uh, too much of a reflex or too little of a reflex for this. And the last thing we have is the vertebral artery test. So he's going to be laying at the end of the table. I'm going to hold his head. So for this, I'm going to externally or externally or extend. He's going to side bend and rotate to the same side. He's going to hold. I'm going to hold this for 30 seconds. Um, looking for anything if he gets dizzy, if he gets nauseous, if his pupils um, change in size. This is an indication of uh, occlusion of the cervical vertebral arteries.